بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجهم Welcome back brothers and sisters to yet another episode um, live on Ahlul Bayt TV our program which is Steps to Perfection is an attempt to try to improve our Quran recitation and our Quranic understanding we will begin our episode today's episode with a Quran recitation and then we will have some tips and advice which you may find useful inshallah and then we'll listen to our participants and give them feedback and that feedback could be applicable to anyone who is watching us so i would invite you and strongly encourage you brothers and sisters to follow with us and we will start our recitation today from the beginning of the 11th juz and more specifically from ayah 94 surah at-tawbah Ayah 94 Surah Al-Tawbah. Ayah وَسَيَرَى اللَّهُ عَمَلَكُمْ وَرَسُولُهُ ثُمَّ تُرَدُّونَ إِلَىٰ عَالِمِ الْغَيْبِ وَالشَّهَادَةِ ثُمَّ تُرَدُّونَ إِلَىٰ عَالِمِ الْغَيْبِ وَالشَّهَادَةِ فَيُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ سَيَحْلِفُونَ بِاللَّهِ لَكُمْ إِذَا قَلَبْتُمْ إِلَيْهِمْ لِتُعْرِضُوا عَنْهُمْ فَأَعْرِضُوا عَنْهُمْ إِنَّهُمْ رِجِسٌ وَمَأْوَاهُمْ جَهَنَّمُ جَزَاءً بِمَا كَانُوا يَكْسِبُونَ يَحْلِفُونَ لَكُمْ لِتَرْضَوْا عَنْهُمْ فَإِن تَرْضَوْا عَنْهُمْ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَرْضَى عَنِ الْقَوْمِ الْفَاسِقِينَ الْأَعْرَابُ أَشَدُّ كُفْرًا وَنِفَاقًا وَأَجْدَرُ أَلَّا يَعْلَمُوا حُدُودَ مَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ عَلَى رَسُولِهِ وَاللَّهُ عَلِيمٌ حَكِيمٌ وَمِنَ الْأَعْرَابِ مَنْ يَتَّخِذُ مَا يُنْفِقُ مَغْرَمًا وَيَتَرَبَّصُ بِكُمُ الدَّوَائِرِ عَلَيْهِمْ دَائِرَةُ السَّوْءِ وَاللَّهُ سَمِيعٌ عَلِيمٌ وَمِنَ الْأَعْرَابِ مَنْ يُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الآخر ويتخذ ما ينفق قربات عند الله وصلوات الرسول ألا إنها قربة لهم سيدخلهم الله في رحمته إن الله غفور رحيم صدق الله العلي العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الأمين وصدق بذلك مولانا أمير المؤمنين والحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجهم we have mentioned previously that um, the hadith from Imam Sadiq alayhi salam strongly recommends reciting a number of ayat on a daily basis, on a regular basis. And the number goes from 10 ayat to, to 50, to 100, to 200, to 500, to 1,000, and so on. Another hadith which is important and extremely uh foundational in understanding our relationship with quran is the hadith from imam sadiq السلام, which is attributed to al imam sadiq السلام, and the hadith says al quran quran 
فينبغي للمرء المسلم فينبغي للمرء المسلم أن ينظر إلى عهده. The hadith says that the Quran is a covenant. If you think about it, it's an agreement. It's a communication from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to his people. And in fact, this, this hadith is strengthened and supported by many ayat. Ya ayyuha nasu inna anzalna alaykum Qur'anan. Inna anzalna alaykum dhikran. Ya ayyuha linnasi wa bayinatin min al-huda wal furqan. Yatlu alayhim ayatihi wa yuzakkihim wa yuallimuhum al-kitaba wal-hikma. The focus of the ayat is in line with this hadith, and this hadith is in line with the ayat, and so is the case always with the words of Ahlul Bayt, is that they are entirely and completely in line with the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with the objectives and the meanings. The ulama say that if you were to receive a communication from an important body or an important organization or an important uh, individual, then you would give it the significance, the reverence, the importance that it takes, that it's related to the sender. So if, for example, we imagine that you receive a communication or a letter from someone that is dear to your heart, then you would take care of that letter. You would keep it somewhere important, that you would spend time reading it over and over again, even though you've read it. But your love and your um, fiction and your uh, great respect for the sender takes you back to that letter and creates an interactive bond between you and the words of the one that you love and the words of the one that you respect and the words of the one that you view greatly. And that's why if we imagine that if someone were to be sent a letter from Al-Imam Al-Mahdi today directly to you. If you receive a letter that says this is a letter for you from the Imam of our time, or even more uh, significantly and more greatly, if someone tells you that we have just uncovered a letter from Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that had been treasured over the years, and that letter is for you. What level of respect, what level of interaction, what level of uh, cherish, how much you would cherish that letter, how much you would take care of it, how much you would give it importance and significance in your life. Where would you keep it? How would you treat it? How would you read it? How many times would you read it? And that's what the hadith of Imam al-Sadiq says, إِنَّ الْقُرْآنَ عَهْدُ اللَّهِ لِخَلْقِهِ أَوْ عَهْدُ اللَّهِ إِلَىٰ خَلْقِهِ فَقَدْ يَنْبَغِي لِلْمَرْءِ الْمُسْلِمِ أَنْ يَنْظُرَ فِي عَهْدِهِ It is a covenant, it is a communication, it is an agreement, it is the words of Allah, it is the letter of Allah to the mankind. And what an honor that the mankind, the human beings, the sons and daughters of Adam السلام, have been chosen to receive this communication and to read this communication and to be addressed by the great creator of all worlds. What greater honor and dignity than that, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the sons and daughters of Adam all human beings. And this is why that the next time we pick up the Holy Quran and the next time we think about the Holy Quran, and in fact, the next time we start a new day, it should be that mindset. The mindset that this is dedicated especially for us human beings. From the Lord of Lords, from the King of Kings, from the Creator of all worlds, from the one who was from before the beginning and will be after the end from the most merciful the most compassionate the most generous allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
that should be the mindset, inshallah, that we will all try to have the next time we pick up the holy book of Quran and the next time we begin it, we begin a day and ensure that we do not finish that day without having had some respect without paying some respect and having had an opportunity to look at the ayat of the Qur'an and to benefit from it. Inshallah, with the barakah and blessings of Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa Ali Muhammad. Now is the time where we listen to our dear brothers, the participants. Who would like to go first? Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم والسابقون الأولون من المهاجرين والأنصار والذين اتبعوهم بإحسان رضي الله عنهم ورضوا عن رضي الله عنهم ورضوا عنه وأعد لهم جنات تجري تحتها الأنهار خالدين فيها أبدا ذلك الفوز العظيم ومن من حولكم من الأعراب منافقون ومن أهل المدينة مردوا على النفاق لا تعلمهم نحن نعلمهم سنعذبهم مرتين ثم يردون إلى عذاب عظيم وآخرون اعترفوا بذنوبهم خلطوا عملا صالحا وآخر سيئا عسى الله أن يتوب عليهم إن الله غفور رحيم صدق الله العلي العظيم أحسان صدق الله العلي العظيم يا غفور يا رحيم أحسان beautiful recitation very good clarity with your pronunciation of the letters that's excellent. Your adherence to many of the Tajweed rules was very good, Ahsan. I would say that be uh, mindful of the Raq. وَمِمَّنْ حَوْلَكُمْ مِنَ الْأَعْرَابِ Do not do Tarqiq of Raq. Do not say مِنَ الْأَعْرَابِ Arabi. This is Tarqiq of Raq. Okay, well, how we should recite it is وَمِمَّنْ حَوْلَكُمْ مِنَ الْأَعْرَابِ because the Ra has a Fatha. The Ra would only be recited with Tarqiq, Raqqa, if it has a Kasra. Okay? Uh, and also the same applies, Thumma yuradduna ila adabin azim, maradu ala nifaq. Ahsant, overall, very good recitation. Well done. Thank you. Who's next? Assalamu alaikum. Alaykum assalam wa rahmatullah. Bismillahi rahman rahim Khud min amwalihim sadaqatan tutahhiruhum wa tuzakkihim bima wassak bima wassalli alayhim wa tuzakkihim biha wa tuzakkihim وَتُزَكِّيهِمْ بِهَا وَصَلِّ عَلَيْهِمْ إِنَّ صَلَاتَكَ إِنَّ صَلَوَاتَكَ سَكَنٌ لَهُمْ إِنَّ صَلَاتَكَ إِنَّ صَلَاتَكَ سَكَنٌ لَهُمْ وَاللَّهُ سَمِيعٌ عَلِيمٌ أَلَمْ يَعْلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ يَقْبَلُ توبة عن عباده ويأخذ الصدقات وأن الله هو التواب الرحيم وقل اعملوا فسيرى الله عملكم فسيرى الله عملكم ورسوله والمؤمنون ورسوله 
Ahsant, some of the really difficult words here, but your recitation had a, a balanced and uh, beautiful melody and that's what we have been encouraged and we have mentioned it in previous episodes we have been encouraged to recite Quran in a beautiful way but also in a sorrowful way so we do not recite it as you know like uh, you know jumping around or we recite it as some people would do a concert out of the Quran that is an issue but if you can recite it in a way that conveys the meaning or that contributes to conveying the meaning and it has a element of sorrowfulness then that what has been strongly encouraged by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam and Ahlul Bayt. And in fact, this is what the ayah says, وَرَدْتِلِ الْقُرْآنَ تَرْتِيلَ with its, inshallah, expanded meaning. إِنَّ صَلَاتَكَ This little alif, this little alif that you find sometimes over the uh, the words, if that little alif, it really requires kind of some detailed attention uh, or attention to details. Um if that little alif is over a letter, on top of a letter, okay, then that letter is not recited. If it's before the letter, then that alif would be recited as an alif, and the following letter would also be recited. If you look here, in salataka, you will find that the alif is right on top of wow. That is ayah 103, in salataka The alif is right on top of the wow, and that's why the wow is not uh, pronounced, it's not recited, and we read this, <laughs> we do not recite it as, <laughs> okay, so that would be wrong, the way to recite it would be, <laughs> who would like to go next? Assalamu alaikum Sayyidim. Alaikum Beautiful recitation. Um, we should try to avoid, I don't know if it was the line or maybe that's what's happened. We should try to avoid emphasis where there is no need for emphasis. Although there is shedda of a ta' 
we don't really emphasize on it. We just read it. وَالَّذِينَ اتَّخَذُوا مَسْجِدًا As opposed to say, saying, وَالَّذِينَ اتَّخَذُوا مَسْجِدًا It's only split of a second. We're talking about really delicate things here. Okay? We read it very smoothly and we move on. وَالَّذِينَ اتَّخَذُوا مَسْجِدًا ضِرَارًا وَكُفْرًا وَتَفْرِيقًا And so on. وَإِرْصَادًا لِمَنْ حَارَبَ حار حَارَبَ اللَّهِ حَارَبَ اللَّهِ It's a bit of a difficult one. Why? Because حَا is one of the huruf, as they say, of istifal or istifala. And ra, because it has a fatha over it, cannot be recited in tarqiq. It needs to be tafkhim or ra. So that's why we have to say ha raba. Okay, not an easy one. Again, it's very detailed and very delicate, but it's worth paying attention to. Ha raba Allah wa rasulahu min qabl. Ahsantum, beautiful recitation. May Allah bless you. Next. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani rajim. La yazalu bunyanuhum alladhi banaw ribatan fi qulubihim illa an taqatta'a qulubuhum. Wallahu alimun hakim. Inna Allah ashtara min al-mu'minin anfusahum wa amwalahum bi anna lahum al-jannah. يقاتلون في سبيل الله فيقتلون ويقتلون وعدا عليه حقا في التوراة والإنجيل والقرآن ومن أوفى بعهده من الله فاستبشروا ببيعكم الذي بايعتم به وذلك هو الفوز العظيم صدق الله العلي العظيم صدق الله العظيم اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجهم ما شاء الله beautiful recitation it was good it was confident and that's good your pronunciation of the letters was good and basically the 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 pace or the speed of your recitation is one of the recognized three and some say five paces or speed in recitation. So the, the slowest pace we have, tahqiq, a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajeem. This is the slowest one. And the fastest one would be, a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajeem. This is not fast forward, this is me reciting, but you recite it quickly. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar Rahmanir Rahim. Malik Yawmiddin. Okay. Now, each one of them has its benefit. However, if we want to contemplate, and what you recited is called tahdir or hadr, and hadr means a bit of a slope. So this is a faster version of recitation, which is good for a very specific purpose. And that purpose, if you are a memorizer, you would use this fast-paced recitation to re uh, you know, refresh your memory of the ayat. So you don't, your intention is not so much to contemplate and think and recite really. Your intention of that level of speed and pace would be to uh, read as many ayat so that you refresh your memory because you're a memorizer. For the purposes of, you know, our level of pace, I would strongly encourage a slightly slower pace than what you have recited. There's nothing wrong with that if you can adhere to the rulings, to ahkam tajweed and to pronunciation, but that slower pace will help us and help you and help everyone to take some time and absorb the words and absorb the meanings and contemplate and think. And as we said before, sometimes um, it is also strongly encouraged to repeat the same ayah so you, re you recite an ayah and you read, you know, if you're an Arabic speaker, you understand it perfect. If you're a non-Arabic speaker and you read the translation and you, you feel like this ayah has hit a raw nerve for you, this ayah has hit something in your heart. And we are encouraged to repeat this ayah, and inshallah I'll mention it in, in an upcoming episode. How Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam and some of the companions and Ahlul Bayt would repeat a certain ayah for a long time. Just because they feel like this is 
um, an ayah that has really touched their heart, or this has an ayah that has really, really influenced or impacted them in one way or another, and they repeat it. In order to do that, we need to have our pace in the middle. So not this lowest of the paces and not the fastest of the paces, but a beautiful recitation, like I said, mashallah, smooth and fluent. Your adherence to Ahkam al Tajweed was very good, and your melody was also balanced. Um, so I would also encourage all of you, dear brothers and sisters, watching us live on Ahlul Bayt TV, is that you also exercise and practice this different, varying. Uh, paces of recitation there is no harm in doing that and in fact if anything it just helps into exploring your abilities so if you have reached the level of fairly confident of your recitation fairly confident of your pronunciation there is no harm in pushing your limits pushing your uh, your mind to read the same ayah faster for the purpose of for the purpose of uh, really you know, practicing and encouraging your brain cells to function even more quicker when you're reading the words of the Holy Quran. Again, we said this is not intended for contemplation and pondering and thinking of uh, the meanings, the deep meanings of the Holy Quran, but this is intended to improve our recitation. This is in intended, intended to improve our memorization skills. So if you have memorized, whether it's from the beginning of the Holy Quran or from the um, latter parts of the Holy Quran, the shorter surahs or the longer surahs, this pace which uh, Brother Hassan recited, which is the faster pace, is perfect for memorization and refreshing your memory with the ayat that you have already memorized. And it's also very useful in being able to push your limits when reciting the words and the harakat. So that when you take a pay, when you take the pace back, when you slow down a little, that will also give you a bit of a, uh, uh, you know, a, a more powerful and a more robust ability to recite at a slower pace because you've already covered the faster pace. Inshallah, I ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala that we are always given the opportunity to serve the name of Ahlul Bayt and to serve the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to serve the Holy Quran in every possible way that we can and ask you, brother, brothers and sisters across the world watching us on Ahlul Bayt TV now that you would remember us and all the believers across the world with your prayers during these blessed times. And until the next episode, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.